Stefan and I are sailing through fucking swells of Swiss bureaucracy right now. We have so much paperwork to read, to fill in, to learn. And that's just the information we need for the theoretical exam. We also have to register the boat where there's more paperwork. Like all the repair requirements as per the surveyor's report, we have to check. By the way, this is another part of our winded voyage, is to go through the entire expertise uh, report that uh, Monsieur Christian Brunelin uh, has put together. There's like 57 pages, is that right? So we're going through the stuff right now and watching skiing at the same time because Steffi used to be a professional skier almost and uh, he just can't, you know, not do without his fill of skiing every Saturday morning. So here we are. Uh, going through this, it's just part of our winded voyage. <laughs> yes it is. <laughs> he speaks! He finally spoke! Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lest we forget the uh, additional cost of traveling down to uh, Le Galopin as part of our winded voyage is uh, paying for all the, uh, uh, the speeding tickets that we've uh, accrued from the dear French government. Thank you very much. We got three yeah. in the day. Three? <laughs> for the moment. Maybe more to come. Who knows? We know there's more on the way back, but we haven't received them yet. And God will be sailing and we won't be able to be charged for speeding. For speeding tickets. Yeah, there's no radars out in the middle of the ocean. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Oh, that's true, there are radars. We're going to have to turn off the radar in EAIS so nobody can see us. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I don't want to neglect in this whole process of buying a boat is the uh, shit that Steffi is going through to... Um, uh, register the boat, so we still has to go through all these paperwork. This is part of a window voyage I don't really want to deal with. Thank God he's here. So, <laughs> thank you, Steffi, for doing that. And it's still not over. No. C'est par exemple pour savoir quand on peut sortir du port, quand on peut y rentrer. Il y a des fois, il faut attendre que ça se passe. Des fois, on attend. Comme ce, ce bateau jaune, il attend maintenant euh, à, à l'encre qu'il y ait assez d'eau pour rentrer. Non, on verra ça après au détail. country. Therefore, the open seas are in a way foreign to us Swiss, I guess. But we are required to navigate safely and in security by the Swiss authorities. So I need to understand and forecast tides. That's right. This is what this exercise is all about. When it's presented for the first time, I was completely confused and overwhelmed. But by doing homework, I'm starting to get it. Saturday morning. I'm here with Steffi at the um, school to learn uh, more about tides. So this is all shit that's going to be done on paper and uh, it will be interesting to someday test it out for real in the waters. So it's a rainy day, it's really cold outside and nasty and kind of cool to be here and to do this in the warmth. So. This information is valuable. I'm beginning to understand the fundamentals of oceanic navigation. But this class is almost like being in merchant marine school or something. There's so much to take in. The
pretending to understand what's going on, but we don't know what the fuck's going on. It's pretty complex. see this applied really on those uh, northern seas there near France. Holy shit. There's more. We all want a shot now. <laughs> we all want a drink. This is fucking. Jérôme wants a drink. Stefan wants a drink. And Sam over there is just playing on his uh, phone. And but I think he's an engineer, so he'll m probably magically pass the test. <laughs> One awesome and simple rule we learned was the rule of thumb. Rule of thumb. It's uh, one size of a thumb, which is 254, so you need to have a huge thumb. Well, you put it on the map, and you should not get closer to that. You have to have a thumb between that and, and the rocks. You just put your thumb down on a chart, keep your ship at a thumb's distance from the dangers. I've known this expression forever, but never knew its true meaning. So here we are, Saturday number two. <laughs> We're going to study um, coastal uh, navigating. So, coastal navigating in the north of France. Here we go, Saturday number two. Hopefully this afternoon I will go on my real boat to get some um, practice on the real water with a real craft because this theory stuff is um, on paper can only go so far you have to get in the water sometimes so it's a nice day today so here we go there's nothing like the environment of the real thing to to really be out there and after being in class and during most of this winter uh, besides being on Gallopin I just needed to get out and on the water and this is the next best thing that I've got here is this absolutely fucking amazing, astonishing lake. And today on this uh, March Saturday afternoon, there's a tiny little breeze, but just enough to get me going. On the water, out of the books and papers and theories and calculations about stuff and tides and directions and stuff like that. Here on this lake you can't hold a straight line because the wind just changes all the time. Now mind you, this is a boat that has absolutely no instruments whatsoever besides the uh, wind indicator, the girouette. And I've always done everything just by feel, like, you know, like riding a bicycle. I just know how to ride a bicycle. I know how to sail. 
the main thing that you got to look out for is some of the strong winds and strong storms that might come around. But for now, this is just... Wow. Look at this. Wow, this is... Over there, this is France. This is... This is my little... My little ocean. I love it. And I'll miss it, but... I'll be so happy to be on Gallopine going on my next ocean, the Mediterranean. see here this little boat is nothing like Galapa. I'm gonna take you inside the cabin and I'm standing in the cabin so the cabin is tiny I can just I barely have headroom here so <laughs> and it's my little e-birth here this little boat is nothing like Galapan but Nonetheless, it is a boat, and any boat is better than no boat at all. So, this is my galley, my sink. It's kind of messy in here because I haven't been in here since uh, last summer, and this is my first time out since the winter. And that's about it. Uh, here's the back cockpit, the front deck. This is this is a bumper I found floating once in a. In a lake so I recycled it but that's it I thought it'd be fun just to, to get out and get some fresh air and do some actual sailing rather than studying about sailing but this is it this is my little baby it's a little lake boat I'm sure there's some crazies out there that probably take this out to sea but um, maybe you could do it I don't know if I dare to. So I'll take you out to the front deck here. There. It's been months since I've sailed. And after all these paper sailboats and theory and theoretical class, like any addict, I needed a dose of the real thing. 